In this Double One Game Creator video tutorial series, we will be going over the basics of using the engine, from detailing what each of the main editors do, to learning how to create your very first game with NPCs and quests. In this third part, we'll be looking at actors, doors, items, and lights, providing a more detailed overview of each of these objects and how they're used when making your games. First, let's take a look at actors. These are the bread and butter of interactions in your game. The main character that the player typically controls is an actor as well as the objects in the world they interact with. They can have artificial intelligence, collide with each other, and can damage one another. To place an actor, select the Actor tool from the Map Editor toolbar. Once selected, simply left-click on the map where you'd like to place it. This will open the Pick Actor Template window. This is where you select which actor template you would like to use. An actor template is like a blueprint that your actor bases its properties on. This can include sprites, scripts, physics, etc. A variety of actor templates are made available to you from the start, and you can select them by clicking on the appropriate folders to the left of the window. For this video tutorial though, we'll be using the character template inside the actor folder. Double click it to open the actor editor. To the left of the window are the actor's general settings. This is where you can select and edit the actor template the actor is based on, as well as set its name, position, size magnification, and X, Y, and Z direction. Directly underneath, are options to set the actor invincible, invisible, initially existent, which means the actor will appear from the start, and solid, so that it can collide with other objects. Automatic movement allows you to specify the moving and phasing direction an actor will take on its own. You can also enable artificial intelligence so that the actor will attack enemies once they're within its sights. The AI options window allows you to adjust certain aspects of the built-in AI, such as the actor's weapon speed, whether it should stay near its actor route, if one has been assigned, its field of view and visual distance, as well as which directions it's permitted to travel in. Lastly, the rewards window lets you specify the amount of EXP, money, points and items that will be rewarded to the player once the actor has been defeated. The base statistics and equipment sections let you set the actor's stats and equipped items respectively. You can move your mouse cursor over these to see which statistic or area of equipment you've selected and you can change these values by typing inside the statistic text boxes or by clicking the equipment buttons and selecting an appropriate item from the pick item magic window. It's worth noting that if you set an actor's HP stat to zero, it will make the actor invulnerable. In the middle of the actor editor is the behavior section. This is where you can change an actor's physics, including its speed and acceleration, whether it can fly in the air, submerge underwater, or move collided actors with itself, etc. You can also set which team the actor is a part of. This will influence the built-in AI to determine if an actor is a friend or foe. The Vehicle tab provides additional settings that can be used for vehicle-based actors, such as its reverse rising and falling speed, how much fuel the vehicle has, how sharply it turns, whether it requires a key to open, and which directions an actor can exit the vehicle from. Lastly, the Turret tab provides additional settings that can be used for turret-based actors, like whether it can be controlled manually or control itself, its turning range, and its initial turning direction. The sprite section is where you can customize the look of your actor. Selecting a body sprite will show all of the clothing options for that body sprite. For the male and female body sprites, these include face, hair, mask, hat, shoes, pants, shirt, and accessory. You can also change the color of each of these pieces by selecting the appropriate color button besides the sprite button. The preview box in the bottom right of the actor editor will show you what your actor will look like in-game. You can also click and drag inside this preview box to change the actor's facing direction. The graphic options window allows you to adjust additional settings, including the actor's tint, opacity and glow, its shadow and glow color, whether it's flipped vertically or horizontally, whether it displays a shadow or is affected by the game's lighting, whether it ignores cursor obstructions or the cursor entirely, the walking animation scale, a multiplier that determines the speed at which the animation plays at. Setting this option to zero will change the animation speed based on the movement speed of the actor, as well as whether it has an attached sprite or overlay. To the right of the actor editor is the triggers section. This contains a list of all the scripting triggers for the actor. We'll cover these in more detail, as well as scripting in general, in a future video tutorial. Now that we've familiarized ourselves with actors, the next step in mapping your game is learning how to place doors, items, and lights. You can place each of these objects in much the same way you place actors, by selecting the appropriate tool on the map editor toolbar, 
moving your mouse cursor over your map and left clicking to place it. First, let's take a look at doors. These provide passageways into buildings or block the player from entering until they've performed a specific task. Doors can require an item, key, or input code to open and have a variety of opening styles. If you place a door on a wall tile, it will automatically make a hole in the wall for the door. Place a door on your map to open the door editor. To the left of the window, you can change the door's name, position, and specify whether its collision should be disabled. Without a collision, the player will be able to move through the door as if it weren't there. The visual section allows you to change how the door looks by adjusting its color, opacity, and glow, as well as whether it's flipped vertically or horizontally, whether it displays a shadow or is affected by the game's lighting, or is invisible. The tile section directly besides it is where you specify the door graphic. The preview box at the right of the door editor will show you what your door will look like in game. The door section is used to set the behavior of the door, such as how it opens, whether it should close automatically after a set amount of time, and whether it requires an item, key, or input code in order to open. The destination section allows you to position the player on a new map or location when the door is used. This is particularly useful for transitioning between the outside of the building to the inside of the building that's on a different map. Lastly, the triggers section lists all of the scripting triggers for the door. For this video tutorial, we'll leave all of the options as they appear by default. Click the OK button in the bottom right corner to close the window and place the door on your map. To test your door in game, click on the play map icon on the map editor toolbar and select an area near your door. Click the OK button on the testing options window that pops up to start your game. Now move towards the door using the WASD or arrow keys and then press the action key, the enter key by default, to open it. Next, we'll take a look at items. These can be placed on a map to help the player out or provide incentive for exploring. Place an item on your map to open the item selection window. To the left of the window, you can change the item's position. The visual section allows you to change how the item looks by adjusting its color, opacity, and glow, as well as whether it's flipped vertically or horizontally, whether it displays a shadow or is affected by the game's lighting or is invisible. The miscellaneous properties section allows you to specify whether or not the item is stored inside a container, like a treasure chest, as well as setting the amount of time before the item respawns. To prevent the item from respawning altogether, simply set the time to zero. The basic rewards section is used to set the amount of EXP, money, and points the player receives, and the inventory rewards section is where you select the item you want the player to pick up or receive upon opening its container. For this video tutorial, we'll select the medic kit item from the common folder, then click the OK button to close the window and place the item on your map. Since we didn't place the item inside a container, the player only has to walk over the item in order to pick it up. If we'd place the item inside a treasure chest, or other container, then the player would first need to open it by walking up to it and pressing the action key, the enter key by default. The final object we're going to look at in this video tutorial is lights. You can use lights to turn a boring looking map into one that truly shines. Every object you place on a map can be affected by the lights you place. However, before you place any lights on your map, make sure that the sun color inside the map environment window is set to something other than white otherwise the lights won't be visible. Once that's taken care of, place a light on your map to open the light editor. At the top of the window, you can change the light's name and position, as well as specify whether the light is turned on from the start. It's worth noting that by default, a light said position, the last set of digits inside the position text box, will be higher than zero. This is to prevent the light from getting stuck in the ground. The color section is where you set the light's color tint. The area section is where you set the light's radius, how far the light will expand, its sharpness, how soft the edges of the light will be, and whether it should ignore obstacles. This setting will yield better performance at the cost of the light being able to shine through walls. You can use the pointer tool to adjust the radius of a light by clicking and dragging on the radius circle and moving the mouse cursor closer to or further away from the light. Lastly, the amplitude graph allows you to set an animation pattern as well as its duration. You can either use one of the built-in patterns or manually draw your own. With this, you can create light animations ranging from a steady glow to a creepy flicker with ease. For this video tutorial, we'll leave all of the options as they appear by default.
click on the OK button at the bottom to close the window and place the light on your map. This concludes the third part of our video tutorial series detailing the basics of W1 Game Creator. In the next part, we'll be looking at scripting, timers, and zones, understanding the scripting language used in W1 Game Creator, the different ways it can be used, including how timers and zones work, and putting together scripts of your very own to add interactivity to your games.